Yeah, let's play this uh, Ben Shapiro thing. Like, I've heard even, like, uh, Ding Dong on uh, the, the left say, like, it is curious timing. This guy is independent. This is the least curious timing one could imagine. This is an investigation that started four years ago. And if you're going to come out with these type of charges, you better make sure that everything is buttoned up. And particularly in England, where their defamation laws are much Serious. more stringent than they are in this country. You can't get away with this stuff uh, that is flimsy over there. You'll get sued. And so the idea that it took them four years is should be uh, to their credit. It's a feather in the cap of the investigation. Yeah. <laughs> but let's think about what happened four years ago. Where were we? nationally in this country and just broadly speaking we were just at the tail end of the me too movement and i've heard someone say like um uh, someone uh, supposedly on the left say uh oh they're going after him because he's independent they never do this with mainstream media figures and then they stopped talking because i kept waiting for except for matt lauer <laughs> and except for charlie rose and except for Bob Garfield, uh, NPR, and the guy who did the NPR morning show, and uh, Weinstein, one of the uh, biggest, like most powerful people who? in media. And of course, there were uh, rumors that, like, you know, Jeff Zucker got some uh, squeezed out because of some of this. Spacey. And the guy at, uh, and, oh, and Ken, Kevin Spacey, and the guy at NBC News. Mark, Mark Halperin. And, and oh, Mark Halperin. Yeah. And I'm talking about the head of NBC News. There was like, like rumors going around. I'm that, thinking all those might be curious if we look back at them now. Maybe those, all those people were getting too close to the truth and too independent. Have you heard of someone named Roger Ailes? Roger, <laughs> I mean, the, it, 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 the list could go on and on and on and yeah, on. Yeah, oh yeah, and right. On. He's threatening the establishment. In fact, there was that's the only YouTuber I think that. Uh, well, I mean, I guess Tate, I guess, was arrested, but in Romania, classic uh, the establishment. Also the that's the, the deep, deep, deep. That's state. the hub of cancel but culture, the, Romania. The idea that this has anything to do with the fact that he has a large YouTube subscription is. Bat crap crazy. Bat crap crazy. And it is all you are doing is running defense. And I'm not saying the guy is guilty or not guilty. People can, uh, you know, assess this from like, there's a lot of evidence that's concurrent from when these things allegedly took place. And the guy might be a nice guy now. Maybe he was a nice guy then. I don't, I mean, if he's doing this stuff, maybe he was just like, you know, in the deep, deep throes of some type of uh, psychological problems and drinking, whatnot, it's not an excuse. The fact that he's a nice guy now, not an excuse. You don't get to choose. Like, well, if I do, if I don't rape anybody for X number of years, then I, all of that's forgiven. I can, that I can happen. pretend that when it does come out that I'm being silenced because of my you know, dangerous. Experience. That's the really despicable part. Yep. Is that somehow you're saying these accusations are because I'm such a danger to society. Give me it an does, effing break. It does damage in rape and it does damage and, in whistleblowing. And here is the most pious, uh, maybe, um, you know, uh, well, I mean, Prager's up there too. Uh, the most pious man in media, the Pope of the Jews, weighing in with his religious edict. So the news that has engulfed much of the legacy media, it's engulfed the British media for sure. A lot of the media here in the United States is this massive expose. Oh, pause expose. it for one second. Incidentally, uh, he's not legacy media. He's talking about it. It just so happens that it was legacy media that had the resources to do the investigation for four years. There's no, you know, these guys aren't doing any reporting. Yeah, Let's face it. Legacy media is what does all the reporting. Of course, but 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 I mean, and 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 if the if the Daily Wire had the resources, you think they would be looking into the allegations of sexual assault against Russell Brand? No. Yeah. Go ahead. From the Sunday Times in the UK, accusing Russell Brand, a person I consider a friend, of rape, sexual assault, and abuse from the period 2006 to 2013. Now. I didn't know Russell Brand at that time. I guess if I had known Russell Brand, I wouldn't like Russell Brand very much mm. at that time, considering that Russell Brand, by his own admission, in all of his writings and in all of his statements, has basically admitted to being a sect addict and incredibly promiscuous and a person who I would be considered to have engaged in incredibly vile behavior during that entire period. And then Russell Brand has remade himself. And in the period where I've known Russell, which is really the past three or four years, 
Russell has been a person who is searching for something meaningful. He has settled down. Obviously, he's married. He has kids. He's a person who's been trying to put together a good life. Now, can I attest to Russell Brand's character from 2006 to 2013? Again, I cannot. I did not know him at that point. Do I think that Russell Brand today is a good person? Yes, I think that Russell Brand today is a good person. Now, is it possible that you're mistaken about people you think you know? Sure, that's possible too. But here is my problem with this particular attack on Russell Brand from the media. My problem is the timing. During the time that Russell Brand was pretty flagrantly and obviously not only promiscuous, but incredibly vile in the sorts of things that he said publicly about sex and about women and all the rest of this sort of stuff, the media were championing him. He was a hero of the left at this time when he was engaged in this sort of behavior. He was he was treated as some sort of person to emulate. The, at pause the time. it for one second. Only- first off, first of all, this is so revisionist. It's untrue, yeah. Um, I, I just to, like it's possible I mentioned Russell Brand once over the course of the decade that he was I. He was in that. I knew he was in that movie. Uh, I forget uh, it, Sarah Marshall. No. Get him to the Greek. Yeah, it's a good I think one. It, I didn't. I, I don't. I don't think I saw it. Bad year for it. But the yeah. idea that this guy was a champion of the left, like where was he? I mean, that it was a very contested notion. I mean, very famously, Mark Fisher, the um, writer, had a, a essay exiting the vampire castle where he defended Brand um, because people on the left were criticizing some of the misogynistic elements of his language, for instance. And I think like the spirit of Mark Fisher's essay is more correct than like the this particular case study has aged. Um, but there's absolutely no way that he was just. A, uh, accepted overall 100%. as like a leftist. No, he's and, just and, talking about show business. That's yeah, what and, and I'm sorry, no, but like he had, he had eventually, he eventually voted for Corbyn, and he said it was the first time he ever voted. Yeah. Before that, there was, I would say, it was at best mixed how the left responded to Russell Brand because he also was open about how he abstained from voting to that period the because there was thing, not yeah. a candidate that spoke to him, which was met with mixed reactions on like uh, on the center left to left, um, as it is. In discourse in this country when we're talking about voting in presidential elections and uh, greater evils or, or, or what have you. So um, Russell Brand was never a hallmark of the left. And also to Matt's point, Me Too happened. There was broad yeah. reckoning in that period about if anything happened. men in power and their relationship with fans <laughs> and what they were allowed to get away with in terms of abuse and sexual assault. So that's exactly what happened. And that's when this investigation started. Bull Prague uh, sums it up pretty well on the I am Ben Shapiro, the left like brand before anyone knew he was a rapist. Now we on the right like him. Go ahead. <laughs> on BBC, he was on MTV. He was being treated as a public celebrity while he was engaging in this sort of behavior. He was the impish devil who was who was having sex with as many women as humanly possible and doing insane amounts of drugs. Now, 10 years later, when Russell Brand has fixed his life and is trying to make a better life for himself now, he gets hit with a full-scale Sunday Times expose about all of Four these years now, in the making. We're going to go through some of the allegations with which Russell has been hit here. Russell has denied all of the allegations. And again, in every situation, when you're talking about like a 10-year, 15, 20-year-ago situation, it is a he said, she said. There's just no way to verify one way or the other whether somebody is telling the truth or whether they are not, absent some sort of DNA evidence. And even DNA evidence isn't going to fully explain what exactly happened. Can you pause it? It is also, he's, it's also, she said, he said the same thing because he said very sorry in response when she said that you had harmed me in this way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's she said, uh, you it texted, ah. um, you scared me, you have a problem. And he said very, and then he said very sorry. Yes. And then she, she went to get checked out. like At a rape crisis center that's, the that's, same day. That's actually like as much circumstantial evidence as D. DNA, uh, it can prove like the, pr- the problem that yeah is is that it's very difficult to prove rape in general um and and they they use that very high bar to clear Could, in these instances especially when you're dealing with someone who has a lot more money than you and a lot more power than you the these type of investigations all all often uh pivot on the idea of concurrent evidence and the concurrent evidence at, at the very least in the case of the woman referred to as Nadia, who was a businessman, a businesswoman in uh, in 2012, um, is extreme. 
Like, I mean, it's extreme. Like I say, she goes to the crisis uh, center the next day. There's texts from that evening as she left the house. Um, this is what her. This is what her. What she was saying. This he said, she said that um, the Shapiro is trying to make it. Um, Uh, when I walked in, the door was unlocked, and I just walked in. He comes running out of the bedroom naked. I'm kind of taken aback. I've got a bag on my shoulder, a little dress, and a coat on top. Nadia says, Bran took her to a wall, kissed her, and made a comment, something like a lines of, I'll keep you safe. And then he told her that a friend was already in the bedroom, and he wanted to join them, according to Nadia. I'm like, no, that's not happening. I don't care. That's not happening. We're not doing that. I tried to get away from him. I slipped away from the wall. Then I went to another wall that had a painting on it, a huge painting. My bag got stuck underneath that, and it's still on my arm. And at this point, he's grabbing at my underwear, pulling it to the side. Um, Nadia alleges that she told Brand to get off her. She wanted to leave, but he carried on. I'm stuck underneath the painting, and he's pushing up against me. He's a lot taller than me, and he has that glazed look in his eye again. I can't move, and I told him, get off. Nadia claims that Brand pushed her up against the wall and raped her without a condom. Brand finally finished, and she, sa and she says she pushed him away. And then he blocks the door that I've come into because he doesn't want me going. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm not okay. You need to get away from me. And he's like, let's calm down. Eventually, he stepped away from the door that had been blocking. And uh, after Nadia told him she wanted to use the bathroom, I ran out and jumped in my car. Thank God I didn't park in his driveway and booked it out of there. That was it. I sat on the road a little bit longer. I was in a daze. At 3.29 a.m., Brand sent a text message. He wrote, I'm sorry. That was crazy and selfish. I hope you can forgive me. I know that you're a lovely person. X. He tried phoning her at 3.51 a.m., but the call went unanswered. Nadia says she was up most of the night. She did not reply to Brand's text until 10.59 a.m. She wrote that she had taken advantage of her and, quote, scared the shit out of me. She wrote in, in her text to Brand, Do you know how scary you are when that glazed look comes over? When a girl says no, it means no. Do I have to go get myself tested? Brand replied, he was very sorry. You don't need to get tested. I will make this up to you somehow. I mean, now it's quite possible she has been fraudulently showing these texts. But this is not uh, disprovable. And uh, Brand has a huge lawsuit if, the, um, if this uh, British paper did not do their due diligence in assessing the validity of that text. Um, meanwhile, she told a close friend what had happened. So this is concurrent evidence. The friend's testimony would be concurrent evidence. She, and not the hearsay associated with it, but the fact that this woman was reacting as if she had been raped. At that time, she took her to the rape treatment center at uh, UC uh, Santa Monica Medical Center that same day. I, I mean, she did everything right. She did everything right, Sam. She had therapy at the clinic for the matter. following five months. It doesn't matter. During the therapy sessions, records show that Nadia was comp contemplating criminal or civil proceedings before untimely deciding against it, ultimately deciding against it. However, she wrote Brand a letter, hoping to regain some of her power in the process. Do you know what you put me through? My body through you scared the shit out of me on July 1st. I thought in any situation I'd be strong enough to fight someone off. You completely broke me down. Um, the idea that this is just he said, she said, and there's no other corroborating evidence is just a blatant lie. Sick. This guy is running, knowingly running interference for this person. It's one thing to say, I'm going to reserve judgment until there is, um, you know, some type of like adjudication that takes place. That's, that seems to me to be like definitely fair. And certainly if it's your friend and maybe you don't want to go out there and, uh, pile on. I, yeah, I can understand that. You don't have to say anything. But to go out and shoot a half an hour video and lead up to this is all about the fact that this guy is a truth teller. This is such BS. Well, what you, but, but, but like I, Naomi Klein, I just want to say this, had this, this point, and I just think it's so, so well said that Russell Brand he has Im imbued his audience with skepticism and to deny everything, to not believe anything that's being told to you, except for in this instance, believe me, except for in this instance, believe Ben Shapiro. Like, like they, they, 
they pretend like they have a complete monopoly over the truth um and and that everything else is something that you should be not believing whatsoever uh when it comes from mainstream sources but listen to us and that kind of like preaching towards your audience it, it, it primes people to be essentially antisocial, but it's also allows for them to get away with everything because they've 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 sectioned an entire like uh, uh, uh part of the internet the people that view them to disbelieve any kind of outside critique they've hermetically sealed the bubble that protects them as well as makes them rich and are in a room together because consent or non-consent is a matter of behavior in the moment it is not something that can be evidenced by physical evidence typically <laughs> unless you're talking about god forbid some sort of like shit up. full-on murderous rape or something he's in saying this it's, particular it's case, impossible well, to have... prove rape if 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 a uh that's basically what he's saying well but then 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 how is he able to make these claims the, if... there's a bunch of stories where women suggest that at the time they weren't happy or they weren't happy afterward. There's one allegation in particular that seems pretty serious that, that Russell has said that he is going to address. Before I get to the actual allegations, the timeline here is that Russell went on his Twitter and he put out a pretty lengthy statement talking about what he saw coming. Because He just then uh, plays some of Russell's... Nah, we don't it was like two minutes. It was like a three minute statement. It wasn't a lengthy statement. And it wasn't even, it didn't even address it what was, the charges were. It just said, things are coming out that say I did something illegal that was horrible. And it and reminds me of Joe, when Joe Rogan and Ivermectin.